what you Deville. want to. Marguerite Duville. Saint Marguerite Duville. All right. Very good. Oh, we saying good morning? We can. Okay, good morning. Hello. Good morning. I think we're streaming. Hey. Hello for all you get to join us early and see all the behind the scenes wonderful things that we do back here. Yeah. yeah. Eight. Tune your heart to the truth. Catholic Community Radio is 1380 WPYR, 105.9 WPYRLP, K286CS, 105.1 Baton Rouge. CCmedia.live. The Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. All across the Gulf South, it's 7 a.m. Time to wake up on Catholic Community Media. Good morning. You're listening to Wake Up on this beautiful Thursday morning. You are tuning your heart to the truth with us today. I'm Gabby Smith, along with Damon Collado and David Dawson. Hey, guys, good morning. Good morning. Hey, it's going to be a good one, folks. Uh, that's what I'm going to hear, mm-hmm. Damon. Oh, you're talking weather or just a good day in general? Good day in general. Like We're alive and kicking. Yes. It's going to be are. good. Yes. Amen. All right. Well, uh, to do that, let's start out with a prayer. Uh, Saint of the day, by the way, it is Saint Marguerite of Duville, and we are going to offer up our prayer to her this morning in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Marguerite is a daughter, wife, mother, and widow. You knew and lived through all the joys, challenges, and sorrows of family life. Intercede for us that we may live the gift of a human, of human love, marriage, and family life according to God's intended purposes and plans. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will learn more about St. Marguerite later on in today's show, but we're starting off with some events in our listening area. You can find all of these events at our website at ccmedia.live, or you can message us on Facebook, which many of you guys have already done. So if you have any questions, feel free to message us, and we'll get back to you with those event details. But with our guest today, Ashley Gilliam joins us in 18 minutes. She's Youth Programs Director for Louisiana Right to Life. And today we're going to be talking about the Pro-Life Summit. So looking forward to speaking to Ashley. They're doing great things over at Louisiana Right to Life. Fighting the good fight for the pro-life community. Yep. In thir- yes, in 35 minutes, David Dawson Jr. joins us. You threw me off there, Dave. <laughs> He's the director of the Office of Fair Support for the Diocese of Loma Thibodeau. And today we're actually going to be talking about something that we have been talking about for weeks now and dedicating our family to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. You can actually go to our website at ccmedia.live under the Resources tab. The prayer is there to dedicate your family to the Sacred That's Heart awesome. of Jesus. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. And it will be on our social media later on today as well. And in 48 minutes, Lynn Buzzhart with St. John the Baptist Church in Zachary will be talking about Father Jeff Bahi's retirement. He's going to be retiring soon, but also his accomplishments and what he means to St. John the Baptist in Zachary, which mm-hmm. is a lot. So right. looking forward to speaking to Lynn later on in today's show. Yep. Uh, he's been a pillar in our uh, he has. <laughs> diocese for sure for yeah. years and mm-hmm. doing great work uh, in our community. Weather-wise, well, the Weather Service has issued a heat advisory for South Louisiana. Be cautious if you're outdoors working today. Uh, drink plenty of fluids because a temperature high is going to be 95 and with a high humidity, which we are expecting, the heat index is going to be around 102 to 105. Uh, And that's degrees in temperature. Uh, Partly cloudy skies. uh, We may see a shower this afternoon, about a 45% chance. Won't last long. Uh, Winds out of the southwest. That's about the only thing keeping us cool. 15 to 20 mile an hour breezes right now. Friday, uh, pretty much the same, only a little bit hotter and a less chance of rain. 
As a matter of fact, it's going to be hot and humid all the way through Sunday, Father's Day, with only a slight chance of rain. Highs are going to be close to 100 degrees. So uh, may see a record to hit wow. before it's over. Just fine. It's American Disney. Wow. Everybody in the 80s right now and in around our listening area, Covington, it's 83. In New Orleans and also Gulfport, it's 84. Uh, home of Thibodeau, 83. And in Baton Rouge, if you want to call it cool spot <laughs> it's 82 <laughs> oh, all man. right folks there you have it man so get out there and just be careful if you're gonna run around outside today more coming up this is chef john falls inviting you to think outside of the box at white oak estate and gardens meet now our gardens are under the outdoor pavilion where delicious food is commonplace strategize adjacent to a trickling stream while enjoying breakfast or lunch Oh, yes, we do parties and weddings, but we'd love to earn your weekly business, too. White Oak Estate and Garden, 751-1882, located on George O'Neill Road, right next to Cypress Springs Mercedarian Prayer Center. Are you looking for ideas to energize your marketing plan? You know, Catholic Community Radio is heard across the Gulf Coast, reaching over a million Catholics. Hi, I'm Damian Collado. Let me show you how you can connect with like-minded, loyal listeners who prefer to do business with someone who shares their values and faith. Just send me an email to underwrite at ccradio.live. That's underwrite at ccradio.live. Listen in, Bruley. Listen in, Denham Springs. Listen in, Baton Rouge. Hear WPYR on FM 105.1 downtown. 105.9 in Baton Rouge East. Or tune in to 1380 AM all over the capital area. And listen anywhere in the world on your smartphone with the free Catholic Community Radio app. In the App Store or on Google Play. 24-7 and always clear. ccradio.live Why do I support Catholic Community Media? Because I listen to it. It feeds my spirit and helps me share my faith. For just a dollar a day, I became a member of the Catholic Community Media Coffee Club. My contribution helps this station spread the truth of our faith all across the Gulf Coast, which means I'm evangelizing. Tune your heart to the truth. Go to joincoffeeclub.com. Joincoffeeclub.com. A good Thursday to you. I'm Father Chris Decker with today's Gospel. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, You fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court with him. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. We've heard the gospel, and now we reflect. In the medieval morality play, Every Man, it captures the meaning of Jesus' instruction, but store up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor decay destroy, nor thieves break in and steal. Every man, the protagonist in the tale, was gravely ill. He received the very disturbing news that death had come to take him on a long journey. Every man pleaded with copious tears. He was not ready to go. But death refused to be deterred. In fear and desperation, every man begged if he could bring along a companion for support, to which death readily agreed. So every man approached his faithful wife of many years, but she was unwilling to go on such a perilous journey. Each of every man's children also adamantly refused to accompany him. They believed they needed to continue the journey of life, 
animal unprepared to make the journey of death. When every man's friends heard of his request, they refused to even come and visit every man before his final departure. And so, feeling discouraged, every man turned to his riches. Certainly, they would go with him because he had always given them so much care and attention. However, every man discovered to his dismay that some of his riches had been stolen. Others lost much of their value, and his family was unwilling to allow the rest to go away from them for this dangerous journey. Now desperate, every man finally thought, Oh, I know who might go with me. I'll ask virtues. Finally, every man found a willing companion. Unfortunately, Virtues was very weak and crippled because she had been so long neglected. She was very willing to accompany every man on the journey, but she doubted that she would survive the journey of death. It is said that John D. Rockefeller was the richest man in the world when he died. He had amassed a huge fortune. A curious reporter asked the family attorney, how much did he leave? The attorney responded truthfully, he left all of it. No one can serve two masters. We cannot serve God and mammon. Well, have a wonderful day. This is Jimmy Sagers. So right there, Jimmy boy. Thank you for that. Can't serve two masters. That's Remember right. that. Uh, and yep. if you are looking for events that you'd like to attend, We've got an interesting one. As we all know, the Eucharistic revival is now moving into the parish level. And our friends over at St. Agnes Church in Baton Rouge, they've got a great event taking place. It's going to be the Masters of the Spiritual Life of St. Thomas Aquinas. It's a talk given by Monsignor Robert Burgreen. It's going to be Saturday, this Saturday. It's going to be around 845. The reason I say around 845 is because of the fact that they're going to have confession at 730, mass at 8 o'clock, and then they're going to do the talk. The talk is focusing on getting to know the angelic doctor, his life, his virtue, and his gifts to the church. If you want to learn a little bit more about St. Thomas Aquinas, and in layman's terms for sure, then Monsignor uh, Robert Burgreen is going to be able to do that for you this Saturday around 845, unless you want to attend Mass. That's at 8 o'clock. St. Agnes Church on East Boulevard, downtown Baton Rouge. He is something else. I don't know if you've heard him speak or not, but uh, oh, Monsignor yeah. Burgreen is uh, incredible. Monsignor Burgreen has been around a mm -hmm. long time. Yes, By the has. way, there a little yes. hidden. there's a special little hidden gem in his talk that he's going to touch on related to the stained, stained glass glasses? windows yes. in St. Yes. Agnes. That's right. We were talking about that oh, yesterday. Cool. Okay. That's right. That's right. June 17th, uh, Magnificat. Uh, that's uh, June 17th. That's Same sat uh, Saturday. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a um, Magnificat, a ministry to Catholic women, will host a mother-daughter breakfast on June 17th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Knights of Columbus Hall, St. Jerome Council 6746. That's at the corner of... Florida and uh, uh, 33rd Street in Kenner. Uh, the guest speaker will be Kim Lekinovich, and she will share the joys and challenges of motherhood as a beloved daughter of God. So for more information and to go to register, just go to ccmedia.live. Well, the next Retrovi weekend will be June 23rd through the 25th at the William J. Kelly Retreat Center in Bay St. Louis. Retrovi is a program designed to help uh, to provide help and support to married couples who are undergoing difficulties in their relationship. It is sponsored by the Catholic Church, but it is open to all faiths. It has proven helpful to couples who are troubled and stressed or if the relationship has grown cold and distant. You can go to ccmedia.live to find out more information, but again, June 23rd through the 25th in Bay St. Louis. Good group. To really help out mm -hmm. marriages. Absolutely. Uh, coming up, July 5th, the day after July 4th, America's birthday <laughs> in, on July 5th from 12.30 to 2 o'clock. There's a talk going to be called Going Past the Shadows, the Ignatian Path of Prayer for Leaders. It's going to be hosted by Becky Eldridge. Now, oh, yeah. this is really yeah. a nine 
total of nine hours enrichment hours uh, online event. It's going to be the first Wednesday of every month over a six month period. Oh, and wow. uh, w- once you start, you, you really got to stick with it if you want to get what they call credit for it. Uh, and uh, that's for the leaders. Cost is $349. Financial assistance is available. And more information, as always, is on ccmedia.live. All right. Those are the events in and around our area right now. In the meantime, stick around because we've got Ashley Gillum coming up on Wake Up. Are you facing an unplanned pregnancy? Adoption may be the right choice for you. St. Elizabeth Foundation cares. We want you to know that you are not alone. With St. Elizabeth Foundation, you have options. Find out if adoption is the right choice for you by calling St. Elizabeth Foundation, 225-769-8888, or visit stelizabethfoundation.org. That's stelizabethfoundation.org. Did you know Woman's New Life Clinic offers free abortion pill reversal? I'm Allison Daigle, CEO of Woman's New Life Clinic. The need to support women in unplanned pregnancies is as important as ever. We offer free pregnancy testing, ultrasounds, professional counseling, and abortion pill reversal, as well as low-cost women's health care. You can help women in need at womansnewlife.com slash donate. I'm Scott L. Smith, a state planning attorney, and I'm an underwriter of Catholic Community Radio. I help individuals, families, and businesses with estate planning and successions, creating wills, trusts, and powers of attorney with offices in Baton Rouge and New Roads. I'm a husband, father of five, Catholic author, and grand knight of the Knights of Columbus and New Roads. I'm attorney Scott L. Smith. You can reach me at 225-718-5334 and on the web at smithlawfirmla.com. Louisiana Bar Association, at filing number LA-21-12335. Have you ever wanted to read the Bible in a year? Hello, I'm Jeff Cavins introducing the Bible in a Year podcast with Father Mike Schmitz and myself. It is available at ascensionpress.com or Apple. An amazing thing is happening right now around the country. People are reading through the Bible in chronological order, and we would love to have you join us. That's the Bible in a Year with Father Mike Schmitz and myself at ascensionpress.com. This is Franciscan Media's Saint of the Day for June 15th. Today we celebrate St. Marguerite Duville. We learn compassion from allowing our lives to be influenced by compassionate people, by seeing life from their perspective, and reconsidering our own values. Today's saint learned well. Born in Canada in 1701, Marguerite left school early to help her widowed mother. At 21, she married Pierre Duville, a bootlegger who illegally sold liquor to the local Indians. Within a decade, Marguerite had borne six children and buried four of them, along with her husband. While caring for her two surviving sons, she ran a store to help pay off Pierre's debts and still found time to aid the poor. Once her children were grown, Marguerite and several companions rescued a Quebec hospital that was in danger of failing. They grew to become the Institute of the Sisters of Charity of Montreal, popularly known as the Grey Nuns, because of the color of their habit. The Grey Nuns Hospital in Montreal set a standard for medical care and Christian compassion. At Marguerite's beatification ceremony, Pope John XXIII called her the Mother of Universal Charity. Canonized in 1990, she was the first native-born Canadian so honored. There's more about the saints along with inspiration and Catholic resources at our website, saintoftheday.org. From Franciscan Media, this has been Saint of the Day. It is 19 past the hour. You're listening to Wake Up. I'm Gabby Smith along with David Dawson and Damian Colado. Our next guest, or our first guest today, is Ashley Gilliam. She is the Youth Programs Director for Louisiana Right to Life. And today we are talking about various events this summer sponsored by Louisiana Right to Life. Good morning, Ashley. Thanks for being with us today. Good morning. Well, let's start off with the Pro-Life Summit. I have been seeing this. I've been hearing this. And I can't wait for you to give us a little bit more details about what we can expect and exactly what it is. So tell our listening audience listening audience exactly what the Pro-Life Summit is. 
Yeah, so the Pro-Life Summit was a conference that just addressed the pro-life issues that are coming up, especially the ones that are really relevant in our state, and that was this past Saturday, June 10th, and so we were able to reach a lot of people and discuss some of the major steps moving forward that we need to be coming together and doing as a pro-life community. So it was really awesome to be in Baton Rouge with a bunch of people this past Saturday. Well, how was the turnout? I see that it was at Bethany Church. Yeah, so that's a beautiful place, um, a beautiful place to host the summit. And we had, I think, a couple hundred people come join us. And we also had a few hundred cars come to our baby supply giveaway that we were hosting at the same time and giving out diapers, wipes, uh, baby shampoo, and things like that to the moms in need in that surrounding community. Mm. Yeah, I figured if it was at a place like Bethany Church, it was a great turnout because of the big space. So that's so good to hear. And, you know, a pro-life issue is not necessarily just one faith. It's it's a bunch of different faiths, and we can come together to fight this fight of being a part of the pro-life community. Of course, as Catholics, we believe in pro-life issues. So tell us, Ashley, what did people learn at this pro-life conference? And when you talk about something like pro-life issues, I feel like they're constantly changing. There's a constant Mm. new battle that we can expect. (laughs) Yeah, so we addressed addressed things like the male order abortion crisis and how we as a community can be combating that, which is the crisis of people ordering abortion pills online. We also talked about abortion in difficult circumstances and difficult cases and having compassion and love for the mother and the child in that situation. So we had some awesome guest speakers, both local and national speakers, to speak on that, um, as well as addressing what our students can be doing and what adults can be doing as they're moving forward in, in our community in order to take action, to be there to support moms and to love moms and to uphold that dignity of life in our community. Mm -hmm, Definitely. Well, let's talk about the Pulse Leadership Institute. That's coming up in just a few weeks. Yeah, so Pulse Leadership Institute, or PLI, is our youth-focused retreat that helps to encourage and empower and educate young people, meaning high school and college students, to be leaders in the pro-life movement. That's coming up on July 10th through 14th, and that's also going to be right outside of Baton Rouge in Baker, Louisiana. Mm. Ashley, you are uh, such a young woman, and I think that's so profound when it comes to, you know, advocating for the pro-life community. How did you get started in Louisiana Right to Life and speaking uh, for these young, vulnerable human beings that can't speak for themselves? Yeah, I got started actually when I was in college. Before that, I didn't have a ton of experience talking about what it meant to be pro-life, and I think that is what inspired me so much to work for Louisiana Right to Life is when I came down to Louisiana, I'm actually not even from here, but I came down to go to college at Tulane, and when I got onto campus, I didn't know how to have those conversations about being pro-life and about addressing people and knowing where to send women who need resources and all of those things. So I felt myself really unprepared to be a part of the pro-life movement. And that's when I got involved at the pro-life, in the pro-life group at Tulane, and I ended up leading it and being president of that group. And that connected me with Louisiana Right to Life. And after I graduated, I started working there because I felt really passionately that young people need to know how to have this conversation. They need to be confident in their answers and their ability to support the women who are in their community and support their peers and the people who go to their schools and things like that. So that's how I ended up here. I I feel really fortunate to have been connected with Louisiana Right to Life when I was in college. It helped me learn how to have these conversations and how to be a pro-life leader. And so I want to pass that along and do that for the other students in our community. Interesting. I feel like for a lot of young people, it's a kind of a challenge to speak out with the pro-life community just because I, the secular media is not like that a lot of the times, yeah. and we can feel alone. So are, do you have any tips or advice that you can give to young people to stand their ground and not stray from what they believe in? 
Yeah, I'd say two major things is in everything we do, we do so with love and with compassion. So if we are coming from a good place, if we're coming from a good mindset and we have love in our heart and love in our speech, and then that is going to spread that kind of positive message surrounding what the students are saying. And I'd also say to find a pro-life community. It can be so impactful to have people who are there with you who are going to surround you, help you, and support you, especially if we're getting that negative feedback or if people are trying to tear us down to have a group who we can fall back on mm. and to be home and to call this place our pro-life home. So it's mm -hmm. what I really try and do around the state is build that pro-life community for young people. Nice. Yeah. How can people get involved? There's so many things for young people, but we also have adults listening as well. Um, are there any other opportunities for adults to get involved? Yeah, so there's a lot of ways that everyone can be a part of this and to get involved. So we have different focuses, whether it be educational and having us come to their church or hosting a speaker at their church or their group to come and speak into that place so that they can learn about what's happening in the state. They can get involved on the legislative side by contacting their legislators and telling them that they're pro-life, which there's more information on, on our website about how you would do that and when we would need someone to contact their legislator, as well as on the service side, of course. Um, there's a lot of programs throughout our community that address specifically walking with moms who are in need or walking with moms who are pregnant or even someone who has had an abortion and is seeking that healing. So I would encourage everyone to look for what they have in their community and even look for what they don't have in their community and try and fill in that gap of who needs help in our community and who, how can we can support. I know a lot of people like to give uh, physical items. Do you accept diapers, wipes, and things that we can give to moms as well? Yeah, so we'll accept them at our office, and we also um, often hold supply drives for our local pregnancy centers. We have over 40 pregnancy centers in the state of Louisiana, oh, right. and they all give That's out great. free supplies to moms in need. Yeah, so anytime that we can support them and give them those supplies as well. So when women turn there, they have them. Great. Okay, so the Pulse Leadership Institute is coming up July 10th through the 14th at the Tim Timothy Retreat Center in Baker. Is there a deadline to register and how much does it cost? Yeah, so the deadline to register is going to be um, a couple weeks before on June 29th, but our, and that deadline is going to be $214, but our deadline, our early bird deadline is actually today, June 15th, and the deadline today is cutting off $199, and that covers everything the students need when they get to camp. So their stay, their meals, as well as all of their awesome sessions, our fun activities, we take a trip to the Capitol, we're going to visit a pregnancy center um, and learn what services they provide, we're going to go to LSU's campus, so all of those fun things are included in that cost. That's great. Ashley Gilliam, Youth Programs Director for Louisiana Right to Life, where can we go to register and find out more information about what you do and what Louisiana Right to Life does? Visit our website, prolifelouisiana.org, to find out more information about Louisiana Right to Life and to register for Pulse, go to prolifepulselay.com. That's great. Thank you so much, Ashley, for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Great. Well, coming up on Sunday, June 25th at 11 a.m. at St. John the Baptist in Zachary, after 40 years as a priest, Father Jeff Bahi will be retiring from active priestly ministry. His retirement mass and reception will be on June 25th, beginning at 11 a.m., and reception to follow catered by Chef John Fultz. Oh, so you know it's going to okay. be great food. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. That's great. And, <laughs> CCmedia.live is where the information is. And the reason this is, you're, you're announcing this to, to everyone, it's just not a parish thing, is because Father Jeff Bahi is... Well, he is kind of nationwide, if you he will, is. right? He's got because a television mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, The Closer uh, Walk, which we air yeah. on, on mm -hmm. weekends, too, yeah. as well. So uh, a lot of folks know who he is, and this this would be this is going to be a good time. But we're going to talk about that later today. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. we will. Mm -hmm. 
15, yes. 20 minutes. Yep. Yep. Yes. Another thing we'll be talking about is actually when we come back from the break, David Dawson Jr. with the Diocese of Homa Thibodeau, we'll be talking about dedicating your family to the sacred heart of Jesus. You can actually go to ccmedia.live right now and click on the resources tab and the prayer to the dedication of your family to the sacred heart of Jesus is on there. So you can pray that with your family tonight when you have you guys all gather together for dinner there after dinner yeah. the prayer is there for you so stay with us it is half past the hour on wake up get better sleep with a new mattress from baton rouge mattress outlet a proud supporter of catholic community radio providing a selection of brand name mattresses, adjustable bed frames, and Maloof pillows and sheets. Baton Rouge Mattress Outlet, 225-930-5779. 4065 Florida Boulevard and Jefferson at Hushatoo Road. Open nine to six, Monday through Saturday, noon to four on Sundays. See much in the gang at Baton Rouge Mattress Outlet. This is Jimmy Sagers, and it's my pleasure to introduce the video series, Understanding Catholicism. It's a love story of how God reveals himself, prepares the world for the coming of Jesus, who establishes his church and transforms us with his sacraments. And in the sacrifice of the mass, Jesus simultaneously takes us up to Calvary and into the heavenly Jerusalem. And the series ends with a reflection on Jesus' passion. The videos and the notes are free to church groups or any individuals. Both are available at the website totustous.com. So come and learn how Jesus uses his church to transform us into himself. totustous.com. Thank you. If you're looking for that special and unique gift, be it rosaries, statues, handcrafted art, or jewelry, stop by the Shepherd Staff Gift Shop at Sister Dulcie's Ministry, located on the grounds of Cypress Springs Mercedarian Prayer Center, 17560 George O'Neill Road. Remember, when you shop at the Shepherd Staff Gift Shop, you're shopping with a purpose. Shepherd Staff Gift Shop is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Catholic Community Radio invites you to pray for the priests in the Diocese of Baton Rouge. This week, join us in praying for Father Babu Varith, Father Michael Galea, Father Tommy Thomas, and Father Matthew McCaughey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of our priests. Through them, we experience your presence in the sacraments. Help our priests to be strong in their vocation and set their souls on fire with love for your people. Grant them the wisdom, understanding, and strength they need to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Give them the words they need to spread the gospel. Allow them to experience joy in their ministry and help them to become instruments of your divine grace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns as our eternal priest. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Right this minute, you're listening to Catholic Community Media. Have you told others about this station? Perhaps how listening has deepened your faith? Become a CC Media Ambassador at ccmedia.live. We'll send you prayer cards and bumper stickers for yourself or even your church. They're free for the asking. Go to ccmedia.live and click on Become an Ambassador. This way, we evangelize together. Tune your heart to the truth. Catholic Community Media. What will make my annuals thrive this year? Hi, I'm Zorn with GreenSeasons.us, and here's a few things. Location is very important. Know how much sunlight your flower wants, and make sure that is how much sunlight it will get when you plant it. This will save you time and money. Soil preparation is also important. Annuals prefer well-drained soil. Work in peat moss and compost to increase the soil's organic matter. Don't overcrowd them. Flowers have to have the right spacing to grow. Flowers from the nursery can be compacted by the pot they were grown in. Gently loosen the root mass before planting. This will cause the roots to spread faster. Fertilize the plants when you are done planting with a slow release fertilizer. Flowers will not need to be fertilized again during this season unless they are grown in containers. 
add some mulch around the freshly planted flowers, making sure not to cover them up, and make sure to saturate the area on the first watering. I'm Zorn with GreenSeasons.us. If you have any questions, 888-353-1971. Did you know Woman's New Life Clinic offers free professional counseling to women for as long as they need, even after their pregnancy? I'm Allison Daigle, CEO of Woman's New Life Clinic. The need to support women in unplanned pregnancies is as important as ever. We offer free pregnancy testing, ultrasounds, professional counseling, and abortion pill reversal, as well as low-cost women's health care. You can help women in need at womansnewlife.com slash donate. 25 before the top of the hour on this happy Thursday morning. Thanks for joining us and thanks for watching on Catholic Life TV. And right now, our guest, David Dawson Jr., Director of Office of Parish Support for the Diocese of Home at Thibodeau. You know, June is the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and we're going to talk about that as to how you can conse consecrate your family to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Good morning, David. How you doing? Good morning. Doing fine. How y'all doing? Doing great, man. So let's jump hey. right into it. Um, you know, we're already midway through the month. Uh, folks right. are hearing more and more about the Sacred Heart of Jesus. What would you say uh, we could do when it comes to our families to, to make it yeah. more front and center? Sure, sure. You know, it's that's one of the things that obviously growing up Catholic, you see images of the Sacred Heart everywhere, you know, and it's just a, for me, it was just kind of like, you know, it's another picture of Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, he's got his heart, which mm -hmm. is, I guess, it's cool, <laughs> um, but I, it wasn't until I got to college uh, that someone, yeah, I don't remember what it was, but introduced me, like, look, there's something here, you know, there's something more than just a nice picture, like, you know, you see a bunch of different pictures and different icons, and they all have their own focal points and that kind of thing, but there's something particular here, uh, particularly for our time, and so, that's something I started digging into and, and started reading about uh, when he started when he was appearing to uh, Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque, and then it, later, you know, when he was appearing to Saint Faustina, and a lot of it's the same stuff with the Divine Mercy image and the message and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and just digging into it and just the, the different, you know, this is one of those things that like you have, you know, your artists uh, who are p depicting different aspects of Jesus's life or uh, or Mary or something like that, you know, different aspects of the faith. Well, this was not an, an artist depiction. I mean, it is an artist depiction, but this is just, the details were given by Jesus to these saints to say, look, this is important. You know, this is a big deal. And especially like right now, given the culture that you guys are living in, uh, you need this. And so that to me was kind of a wake up call. Like, hey, look, you might want to pay a little more attention. There's something here that I want to give you. And that to me, it, uh, it's, it, there's a certain image of God, you know, for me. And I know growing up and especially that the, 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 we tend to kind of give to our kids and our families that like, look, these are all the things you have to remember. These are all the, the, the teachings and all the, the different things that you have to remember to keep a part of your, your heart and your brain, your prayer. you got to stack all these things, and if you forget one of them, you know, you're, you're, it's a problem. So <laughs> I think for me, a lot of times you start adding all these devotions, and it's like, oh, God, how much can I actually remember and, and yeah. keep in mind? You know, like, I want to be a good person. When the truth is, if, if he's going to show up and he's going to show himself and he's going to reveal something about him, it's, this is like good for us and he wants it for us he wants us to give us something good and the sacred heart devotion is one of those things that's like this isn't one among many this is like a central key aspect of jesus it's not like an extra thing this is getting us deeper into who he is and what he's all about and what he does for us in a way that's particular for us so it's definitely worth diving into you know for sure and you know it's it's his way of showing his love for us us and of course mm -hmm. his heavenly father but more importantly willing to give yourself up and i don't mean that in yeah. death in today's world though 100 years ago when this was taking place as far as the feast day goes uh, maybe mm -hmm. there was some death taking place that brought it to the forefront but but you know, to, to yeah. sacrifice yeah. and and to love and to give love is is mm -hmm. part of this and with the feast day being tomorrow what mm -hmm. better time to celebrate? That's right. And it was, it was actually, uh, he gave St. Margaret Mary Alacoque that image during a time where in France where Jansenism was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And this is important for us because Jansenism is like, look, you've got to get your stuff together. You've got to be perfect. you got to avoid all possibility of sin. Otherwise, it's not going to work out. Like this whole faith thing is going to be a problem for you. Uh, like people, like they, they were celebrating the fact that very few people were going to communion because they weren't worthy. Uh, so this was Jesus yeah. being like, hey, look, there's a whole lot of people not taking advantage of the fact that I am pouring myself out for you. 
look, look at his heart. Like I'm ripping my chest open to give you access to the very heart of me. Please take advantage of it. Please tell the people to take advantage of it. And I know for us and our family, we put, you know, this image of the sacred heart up so the kids can see it and, and, and to see it because there's, you know, you look at that image and you've got the thorns around the heart. You've got, it's on fire. Mm-hmm. You've got the cross on the top. You've got the hole in the side with blood coming out. I mean, there's so much, I think, for me, like when you, when you look at that, all these different aspects of this image, like I said, this is not just a romantic artist's kind of depiction of what he thinks you should think about and feel. This is Jesus being like, look, there's a lot going on here. Mm-hmm. And if you take your time, just focus on the fire. Just focus on the thorns. Just focus on the hole. Like, you've got access here. I know your life is messed up. I know you've got, you know, your, your, your mind and your heart is wrapped up in all these different things. Like, I know you are sinful. <laughs> I know you're not worthy. I know you don't have what it takes. But my heart is burning to pour myself out in love for you. And it, the way that you get in is through this hole, this spear jabbed in the hole in my side. That's the way you get in, to get in there. You know, like, wow. get in there and take advantage of this because I'm dying to give myself to you. So yeah. he's like ripping his chest over and being like, come on, get in here. <laughs> so, Dave, what would you suggest? There's got to be some ways in which we can um, help our children understand the beauty yeah. of this feast. Uh, I know uh, when our little ones were little, we at the table, uh, we had in the center of it uh, a candle and, and a picture of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Oh, yeah, the image and, of and, the, and, on the yeah. candle. Yeah. And, and uh-huh. it, was, right. it was beautifully lit, and you'd dim the lights, mm-hmm. and, and you could focus on that. There's some other ways you could do it as well, though. I'm sure you have yeah. a few. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think honestly, it, just having the image and being able to say, look, uh, there's, something, there's something important about this image, especially, you know, tomorrow, this month is a very helpful. It gives you an excuse to check it out. Mm-hmm. What I do with the kids is say, look at this. And just talk about one aspect, you know, talk about the, the, the fact that it's on fire. Like, you know what it feels like to really be excited about something, to love something, <clears> to <throat> where it just lights you up, right? The passion for it, your desire for it, you know, like, and, you know, something simple, uh, sports, you know, that kind of thing. I think for, for married couples, it's very easy uh, to think about that. Like when you, you, you know, your desires inflamed and your, your love for one another, your deep appreciation mm-hmm. for each other, like picture that times like infinity, you know, this is what's pictured here. And it's funny how, like, when, when you get those explanations, growing up then, you get to see, like, every time you see a picture of the Sacred Heart, because it's all over the place, right. you're reminded, mm-hmm. and that's why he gave it, you're reminded of, like, there's a deep passion here. This is real. Mm-hmm. This isn't just, like, a, a, a Valentine's Day thing. I mean, like, it's on fire. This is a big deal. And they're talking about the thorns and the hole and the cross. Like, he's, it's not just uh, because we're perfect. Like, he's willing to enter into this mess with us, the pain with us, because of this fire. And I said, you know, I think these, these, these descriptions don't have to be deep theological stuff. He gave this image to a simple nun to be given to a bunch of simple people who were in a messed up world being tossed around by all these different beliefs and right. everything. So it's, it's, I think it's important to be able to, to – if we can just kind of give them a sense that, like, look, this image here is more than just a, a happy, you know, Valentine's Day kind of picture. Like, give it time. And, and every now and then, like, I'll, I'll take a look, like, check, check out this heart. What do you see? You know, like, mm-hmm. what does it tell you? And let them kind of talk it out. Like, that's, that's huge. And I know there's, there's, there's different ways you can enthrone and do consecrations of your home with the Sacred Heart. I highly recommend those. But even then, it's, this is not meant to be like a magic formula. It's meant to draw us into something over time. So having that image right. up is important. Yeah. And, in fact, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the picture of it, has been in our house and it's changed rooms, ironically, oh, okay. throughout the years. But right. but the yeah. you know in honor of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, yes. I just find it it for some reason it brings peace and I feel protected when when it, 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 it gives you peace, show. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And do you have the do you have the Sacred Heart and the Immaculate Heart together, or no. is it just the Sacred Heart? Just by the itself? Sacred Heart yeah, of right. Jesus, the picture of Jesus. Yeah, because yeah. you usually do see either yeah. or, you know. Uh-huh. So yeah. I, I'm right. just curious. Well, in, in the Feast day of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is the next day, Saturday, oh, Saturday. this Saturday. So, That's right. uh, boy, what a great month, huh? Amen, amen. Yeah, and that Immaculate Heart, I think that's, there's another key there that you've got. I mean, she's got swords going in there. I mean, yeah, you got yeah. flowers, so it's a little prettier, you know, but <laughs> you got swords. I think the recognition that, that uh, she is able to participate in what he's got going on, so you can enter into hers, and entering into hers is entering into his. Yes. Because yes. it's the same wound, it's the same wounding. Like, our sinfulness is not an obstacle for him, and it's not an obstacle for her because of him. Uh, so so th- that for me has been, especially this month, just such a great reminder that, like, Look, it's got not, nothing to do with my worthiness. It's got everything to do with the fact that they have let me in to the point of wounding. Like, like 
get in here. You know, so I think yep. that for me to be able to sit with that is important. Knowing it is one thing, but be able to sit with those images and let them speak to that, you know, the recognition, like not only are you forgiven, but there's a desire for connection here and there's mm-hmm. nothing keeping you out, you know? Amen. Yeah. And that, that, it doesn't matter how old you are. That, that can speak to you. Well, that's great. David, thank you so much. David Dawson, Jr., Director of Office of Parish Support for the Diocese of Home at Thibodeau. And you can get the prayer consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus for the family on our website, ccmedia.live. Go to resources, look for the sub tab that says prayers, check that off and you'll find it. All right, we've got more coming your way. It's 45 after the hour. Make it a point to go to church tomorrow too. Here's a CC Media Did You Know? Do you know why our call letters are WPYR? In 2009, the word spread to pray your rosary for Baton Rouge's first Catholic radio station. The prayer worked. For more of our history, visit ccmedia.live. I'm I Am A Law Song with River Road Coffees. We're proud to support Catholic community radio across the Gulf South. Our coffee wakes up the staff every morning and keeps them going throughout the day so they can deliver the freshest Catholic content and news to you. You'll also find us at many Catholic community radio events. River Road Coffees at your local grocer or visit RiverRoadCoffees.com for home delivery. Delivering customized services while developing lasting client relationships is what sets Olent Group One Solution apart. As an independently owned agency for over 25 years, the foundation of Oland Group's success is the commitment to help individuals and businesses maximize and protect their economic potential by providing personal attention, quality products, and superior services. Olet Group offers employee benefit consulting, financial services, property and casualty, and specialized insurance for emergency services. Visit olengroup.com and see how our family protects yours. Olen Group, one solution, helping address your needs today and for many years to come. Securities offered through Calton and Associates Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC, OSJ, 2701 North Rocky Point Drive, Suite 1000, Tampa, Florida, 33607, 813-264-0440. Olin Group, Olin Financial Group, Nassau Olin Benefits Consulting, Olin Porsche Insurance are not owned or controlled by Calton and Associates Incorporated. Lord Wellington Investments is owned by Greg Kennedy, CPA, a longtime friend and supporter of Catholic Community Radio. Lord Wellington Investments serves all of your investment, financial, and tax needs in South Louisiana. From 401k rollovers to financial and tax planning, it's Lord Wellington Investments. Greg Kennedy says, invite others to join you in listening to Catholic Community Radio. Lord Wellington Investments, 225-292-5118. Catholic Art and Gifts, 6184 Florida Boulevard, is a proud sponsor of Catholic Community Radio. Catholic Art and Gifts has sacramental items as well as supplies for church and clergy. Catholic Art and Gifts also stocks the latest books from Catholic authors, plus children's books, baby items, and gifts for all occasions. You'll always receive a warm, heartfelt welcome from the staff. Catholic Art and Gifts, 6184 Florida Boulevard, 225-926-1216, on the web at zieglers.com. Here's a CC Media Did You Know. Can't remember when your favorite program comes on? We have a printable schedule on our website so you know what's playing when. Click on Programming, then click Baton Rouge at ccmedia.live. 48 past the hour. I'm David Dawson along with... Gabby Smith, Damian Collado, you are tuning your heart to the truth. We got a very special event coming up. Uh, we are going to be celebrating Father Jeff Bahi. Father Jeff Bahi with the Diocese of Baton Rouge and a very, very special man with a whole lot going on. And we're going to be talking to Lynn Bazart about that. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning. Yeah, let's let's talk about uh, Father Jeff. Uh, you know, I've worked with him. Damien here in the studio, he's worked with him, and he's he's just an incredible guy because we can say we work with him because he has done so much, mm. right? And and I worked with him. Uh, we we air closer walk. Um, I'm sorry, closer walk uh, on the radio on. Uh, Catholic Community Radio on the weekends. He also has the TV show. He has a lot of other things going on, too, doesn't he, Lynn? He does, and I tell you, you've touched upon the most important point, and that is he is 
so accomplished in the art of communication. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are in the communication business, so you know how good people can be. But they usually are very good at one of two things. Either they're good at face-to-face, one-on-one communication, or they thrive in front of a large group. Do you find that to be the case? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. So how does he do it both? (laughs) because <laughs> he, he, he does is so good at both it's, yeah. it's amazing to me and, and yeah. i think he does it in his humble words he does it because the holy spirit speaks through father jeff yeah yeah um and what we find is that you know he can sit in his office face to face with a person he listens intently to what they have to say and then he can provide sincere counsel and comfort but he can leave that office walk across the church campus address an entire congregation Yep. And every parishioner feels like he's speaking directly to them. Right. Um, have you heard him give a homily? Oh, my goodness, yes. Uh, he knocked well, your well, socks you know, off. You know? Yeah. He does, doesn't yeah. he? With that booming voice, you just That's can't right. fall asleep. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And he calls me baby. So, you know. <laughs> but no, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. And he can do the same thing in on his uh, recorded messages for us over, over the radio. And then, of course, on television, too. I mean, if, if you haven't been able to tune in to Closer Walk, it, it's amazing. And it's only a half hour long. But it is, it, it'll just, uh, once again, it'll knock your socks off because he just, he speaks right to the heart, doesn't he? He really does. Mm-hmm. I mean, he can, can include a message that even though on the air he's reaching thousands of people, each person feels like they're being communicated with one-on-one. Yeah. It's an amazing ability to me. And then, you know, he's, he's authored a couple books, so he right. communicates through the written word. Yes. Um, that first book, Then Comes the Morning, yes. is a compilation of those very strong homilies that you've witnessed. Yes, no, you're and absolutely And then his right. other book that really touches uh, my particular life is Paved with Souls. Mm-hmm. I mean, this one recounts the six summers he spent with Sister Teresa, right. Mother mm-hmm. Teresa Rowley yes. of Calcutta, working with the poorest of the poor. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that is just so impactful because it shows his ability oh. to get down, to do the nitty gritty work in trying to save souls. Yes. And and you do you remember that he anointed her before yes. her death? Yes, yes, he had. What wow. what an amazing man! Isn't that something? Yes, uh, that he did that he did her last rites or the yeah anointing of the of yes, the sick. Yes, he did. Right, that he that did. that is just beautiful. Another thing that I recall that he did because uh, I I remember working with. Uh, those items as well when I was associated with Closer Walk Ministries was he had that CD with uh, Aaron Neville. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Um, and thankfully, thankfully, Aaron did the singing and Father just did the <laughs> narrating. <but laughs> it's I true. I particularly like to listen to that during Lent. It's, during it's Lent, wonderful. right, because, because it is the way of the cross, you know, yep. and it's called yes. doing right. it their own way, which is, I mean, he throws in his comments through the whole thing, and yep. then you got Aaron's beautiful voice. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah, I remember well, playing that in the fourth grade. I was in charge of putting the CDs on during religion for reflection. I remember putting that CD on in the fourth yeah. grade on our uh, little blue boom box. That's awesome. Oh, wow. <laughs> I well, totally Lynn, forgot about that. <laughs> Lynn, not to take any away from his retirement, but he's not going to stop doing God's work. He's got metanoia. That's right. He does. And I tell you, it's just proof that he doesn't just talk the talk. He actually walks the walk. I Mm -hmm. mean, he was so instrumental in the formation of Metanoia. He raises awareness worldwide about human trafficking when he works with Sister Eugenia Bonetti. And, I mean, he's created a brick-and-mortar refuge for these victims of human trafficking. And I doubt that he will ever rest until he sees its end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I think this is what makes... Uh, Father Jeff, by he's so endearing to other people, is because of his passion, and it just overflows. And that's why, when you listen to the man talk, I mean, it can't help but hit you right between the eyes because of his passion and everything that he does and everything that he believes in. Right? You're right. I mean, mm-hmm. he leaves his mark wherever he goes. Yeah, he truly does. And we've seen that in preparing his retirement reception. We visited with so many people from other parishes that have made contact with Father Jeff. And they tell stories of the profound impact he's had on their lives. I mean, when you think about it, Dave, yeah. he's been in our church parish for over 17 years. So 
Oh my children. Gosh. I didn't realize that. You're talking up at Zachary. Yeah. He's been in there 17. Well, I tell you mm-hmm. what, he rebuilt wow. the church. I know that. It is right. beautiful he up there did. now. He did. He yeah. did. And, and Gabby, Gabby made me think about it just now when she said she played a CD in fourth grade. Right. And that just shows you how far back he reaches. That's because true. some children in the parish of St. John the Baptist and our sister church, Our Lady of Assumption, were baptized by him. They received their first con- reconciliation with him. He administered their first communion. He witnessed their confirmation. Can you imagine the impact he'll have on the future of these little Catholics? Oh, no, you're absolutely right. So where are you going to put all the people who come to this reception? I know. You better have an auditorium somewhere. (laughs) Well, I tell you, we're expecting a great number of people, and we've got a committee that's been working very hard. We're going to have part of the reception in our parish hall and the rest in what we call the PAC. So we'll have an overflow area. We welcome as many people that would like to come through the doors because we will find a spot for them to have their time with Father Jeff. And you got Chef John Foles cooking the food, too. So We do. <laughs> he's he's he, Chef Foles and, yeah. and, and several other people that have worked closely with Father have generously volunteered to provide the food and refreshments for the congregations of people that will be there. Well, Lynn, before I let you go, let's uh, remind everybody when and where uh, the event's going to take place. Surely. Uh, The reception will be held on Sunday, June 25th, after the 11 a.m. Mass. Okay. Um, And the theme is very, very appropriate for Father. It's a verse from Matthew. Well done, good and faithful <laughs> servant. Amen. And, yes. <laughs> and we know we feel like that sums up Father's life. Yes, 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 indeed, yes, indeed. It's it's been an honor to know him and and work with him. And uh, I'm going to be there. I'm looking forward to that. That sounds like it's going to be great. Great. Lynn, thank well, you so we'll much for joining us. So. Thank you for having us. All we right. appreciate it. God bless. You too. Bye bye. Pretty is pretty amazing Ooh. guy. Oh, you know, he's yeah. a good man. Yeah, definitely. Yep. And uh, happy for him. Happy that he can uh, retire. I'm not sure he's going to do I much relaxing. I don't that happening, but, no. <laughs> but he'll focus his attention on whatever God leads him to do at that time. Right. So, All right, we're going to wrap up with a prayer uh, to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, since that was the topic of our discussion today. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. O most Sacred Heart of Jesus, we come to you as a family and consecrate ourselves to your Sacred Heart. Protect us through your most precious blood and keep us pure and holy. O dear Jesus, we are so far away from your most pure and sacred heart. As a family, we need your help. O sacred heart of Jesus, make our hearts like yours. Amen. 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 The Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Big day tomorrow. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We'll catch you back here tomorrow at 7 a.m. Central Time. We have a great show lined up for you. Emily Chapman is a Catholic author. She'll be talking about her book, Mary, Mother of All. Of course, Jeff Young, the Catholic foodie, joins us and Adelaide Hude. We'll talk about a new book for kids called Sanctus Sanctus, an introductory Latin missal for children. Very cute book. Have a wonderful Thursday. God bless. is a production of Catholic Community Media.